What's up everybody, I'm Fielding Shredder and today I'm gonna to show you how I put an inexpensive comm system in my helmet. Now the reason I'm gonna share this with you is because Lone Star Drift is doing something really cool. Aaron Losey has decided that he is gonna allow the judges to communicate with the competitors in real time and tell us some things we can improve in order to go up further in the battles. Now this is really gonna help out with One More Times because if you made a mistake that you weren't really sure what you did wrong, and you know, maybe you don't have a spotter or your spotter maybe wasn't paying attention or didn't know, this is a great way to get feedback real time from the judges so they know, tell you exactly what you need to improve on, exactly how to get better, and it allows you to do that right away. This is what we'll be installing today and I'll be sure to include all the links in the description below so you can go ahead and buy one yourself. You'll also want to make sure you have a set of radios that are compatible with the headset we're installing. You'll also want some glue, a screwdriver, a razor blade, and a plastic wedge tool and not pictured is some tape to hold things in place. Now you can use either hot glue or my preference is E6000 which is this industrial strength glue. It takes a little longer to dry but it does harden a lot better and holds a lot stronger than hot glue and especially in hot environments like Texas the hot glue can tend to kind of get soft and fail eventually. Now there's two different kinds of helmets. There's the kind with the glued in pads. Now the glued in pads are a little more difficult to work with You'll have to especially start to use these tools here and kind of wedge them in there and get those helmet pads out. Um, each helmet is a little bit different configuration. Some have large cheek pads, some have multiple pieces, some have the, the head cap in multiple pieces, some are in one. Just depends on your helmet. You'll have to kind of go with what you know from this video and just figure it out on your own. And then some of them have a mouth cover here as well. This is an Orca helmet. I just got this for this year. This thing is really cool. Uh, I'll show you a couple of reasons why here in a minute, but the first thing is just getting the, the pads out is very easy. So they're not glued in, they're just kind of wedge fit in here and they come out real simple. Again, no glue or anything like that. So just pull these things out and then mine has a mouth pad as well, which comes out last. So make sure you pay attention to what order you put these or you take them out in so that you can put them back into the same order. Now that's all it's going to take for getting in suit inside the cavity of my helmet here. Um, you can see that I've already glued in the microphone piece. Now what I did on that is I just tried to line it up as best I could and Orica and their Infinite Genius already has kind of a cutout for this. So it was really great that the helmet already has provisions for this. If your helmet does not have provisions for this or you don't have a removable mouthpiece, then go, go ahead and just glue it right on there. Uh, put the helmet on figure out where your mouth is, where it's gonna get its best you know, pickup for the sound, and glue the piece right there. So you're gonna to wanna to, you know, put a little dab of glue there, and if it's the E6000, you hold it with a piece of tape, and if it's the hot glue, you just kinda of put your hand on it until it's dry. So that was the first step. Make sure when you do that, you decide which direction you want that wire to go. In my case, I chose to go towards my left ear, because I'm gonna have the bundle of the wire all end up on my left side here because I want my wiring to go down the left side of my body and attach to the rest of the wiring harness on that side. Your car may be different or maybe you're doing this for your passenger helmet. So if you're do it, doing it like that, you know, make the wiring harness come out on the right side and make it a little easier. Just depends on how the wiring is set up in your car. Now moving on from there, I'm gonna get these ear pieces put in. So these come with like a little black kind of felt sheath around them. I pulled that off. Um, that doesn't do anything for what I'm doing in my application, so I didn't need it. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is figure out where you're going to want to put these. So, again, depends on your helmet, right? So this Orica helmet is also another nice feature. It's built with comms in mind. So you just peel this back, and you can see a little cutout right here that's perfectly ready for some form of speaker. Now this one's actually kind of a step further, and there's some sticky kind of spray adhesive that's already in there. So again, Orica has thought of everything and they've already implemented a, a sticky kind of area for this to go. All we'll have to do is put a little relief cut for the wiring, so I'll do that right now. Super quick, just take your box cutter, peel this back. Here's where I put a little slit in the padding. Then we just simply slide this in here, push it down, and it's good to go. You can see it nice and snugged in there. Wiring is nice and tucked. Then we just simply put this piece of cloth back and it's ready to go in the helmet. So then I'm gonna take it, get it ready to go into the helmet here, pass the chin strap through. Okay, 
Here's where you need to make sure you don't get any wires tangled up or anything. Pull it through, nice and snug. Okay. Now look here. You can see the wire right here. That's coming from the cheek pad. Now I decided that I'm just gonna route it right up here and then start routing it up under right here. Now I take my plastic wedge tool and just kind of wedge it just like that. You just got to work it. All right. Now I take my other cheek pad, again peel it back. I've already cut my little slip there. Stuff it in there. Okay. Now here's where you want to make sure that you organize all this wi wiring, okay? And get it cleanly routed, right? So you just find the simplest, cleanest routing and then just start adding little dabs of glue, okay? So this is where it's going to be a little bit more time consuming. You basically will find a couple of small areas that you can dab the glue, get it wound up kind of like this, and then you're going to put a piece of tape over it and then just let it dry and then you come back in a couple hours and finish the job. I would recommend putting one final kind of large dab of glue on this junction right here. That's going to be kind of like your anchor point because this is going to get tugged on, okay? This piece of wiring. So you're going to want to make sure that this is anchored well into that helmet. Now, some companies will go as far as to using a very tiny Adele clamp with a rivet. So you would drill a small hole in the helmet itself and then add the Adele clamp. You can do that inside or outside of the helmet, whatever you choose. Some people will even drill a hole and send this through it, okay? Um, lots of different ways you can do it. However you want to do it, it doesn't really matter. Just try and make sure that it's secure because, again, this will be getting tugged on and you don't want it to pull the rest of the wiring out of the helmet. All right, once that's done, just finish putting all the rest of the padding back in. This all terminates to one final piece. It's a five pin connector in this, on this particular setup. And it just goes right into the part where it says mic. So these connect right here. So typically this is what you're gonna be connecting and disconnecting from the car if you have a permanently installed uh, push to talk button. So this push to talk button, um, it does actually have its own spot where you can disconnect it. So if you choose to disconnect it here and leave the mic and headphones and um, you know radio in the car, you can do that too. Just depends on how you want it set up. But you have these kind of turnbuckle here that allows it to you know make sure it doesn't come unscrewed or anything like that. And then this is your push to talk button. So this is pretty convenient. Um, you just push it, you hold it down when you want to talk, the mic's already there. You don't have to look for the radio or fumble around for finding the button. This can be easily mounted. It comes with a little Velcro strap. I chose just to put it on my door bar on my roll cage. So I just mount this thing around the door bar on the roll cage and I just reach down and push it with my left hand. Just push to talk like that. And then finally the last piece is this radio here. So you're going to want to basically just you know, leave it plugged in. Um, I would recommend that you go ahead and test this whole setup before you install it in your helmet and glue it all in and everything. Make sure that you didn't get one that was dead on arrival or have any issues like that. So you just plug it in and then you know, turn it on and obviously you'll have another radio to so check it. You can make sure that your mic works, make sure that the, you know, it's receiving with the earpiece and everything like that and make sure that everything is functioning as it should before you glue it in. Now, I do want to mention that as I'm doing this, I'm not a professional helmet comms installer, so this is just how I've done it. I'm not telling you this is the best way to do it. I'm not telling you it's the only way to do it. I'm just saying this is how I did it. If you have anything that you would suggest that would be a better way to do this, or maybe a little tricks and tips that you've learned, feel free to please comment below and let us know some of the things that we could do to improve this process, because we're all here to learn and we're just trying to get comms in our helmets, right? And spend as little money and time as possible. Now, if you notice on this one, you can add a little clip, okay? And that's what I did here. So this is just a little clip for organizing wiring. It actually came off of like an Ikea uh, desk, um, but it worked out great for this. And I just kind of made sure that it was the right length to where this all rested nicely. And if you look, I can push on it and it holds perfectly the end piece of this. Nothing's going to get tangled up. 
And now this helmet can be worn in a car with or without any kind of, you know, comm systems. So it's not like it is only good for the comm systems cars. Now it's good for any car and it'll keep it out of the way, keep it from dangling or getting snagged on anything. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found some of it informative. Again, please let me know if you have any tricks or tips, leave them in the comments below. Let us know all how to do this better so that we can each take as little time as possible and get out on the track and drive some more.